Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I wanted to talk about a concept with Docker images, uh, specifically the Docker ignore feature, and how you can, you know, <laughs> accidentally make your Docker images larger than you want them to be, as well as some best practices around using Docker ignore, uh, and a quick demo of of that. So let's jump into it. All right, so for today, we're just going to make, I don't know, a very simple application. I'm not even gonna make the full application. I'm just gonna set up a virtual environment, pretend like I'm testing something and, I don't know, install a few packages and then make a Docker image. Um, so let's say that, you know, I had made a virtual environment and maybe I'm doing development outside of a Docker image, writing my tests, etc. There, maybe I need to have, you know, PyTest, coverage, flakeate, pre-commit, I don't know, a whole bunch of, packages that I'm doing development on uh, installed outside of my Docker image. And maybe I'm also working in a Git repository. So maybe, you know, uh, I <laughs> install or like make my initial commit, empty commit, and maybe I do some development there, et cetera, et cetera. But we'll just pretend like, you know, I have some sort of thing set up here. Uh, and next I go to make a Docker image of this. So we're going to open up our Docker file and maybe do from Ubuntu Focal. And I don't know, you would probably install some software, do some other things here, but for, for the sake of the video, we're just gonna skip that part. Uh, but eventually you want to add your application. Maybe we're you know, in the source directory and we wanna copy all of our source code into our source directory. And so you might build you know, a Docker image like this. But we have made <laughs> a set of really easy to make mistakes here. Uh, just with this very simple Docker file here. Uh, and when we go to build this, docker build t app dot, for instance, uh, it's going to you know copy our application. Oh, maybe we should have put a little Python file here, app.py, if name equals name exits main. Just a simple hello world program here, python dash m app. Um, so let's rebuild that again. And so we've made a, a, a pretty, you know, unfortunate and easy to make mistake here in that when we do copy dot dot, it's gonna copy in more stuff than we expect, including this virtual env, you know, this pycache directory, the dot git directory, all of that is gonna end up inside of our image. And we don't want that because it makes our Docker image bigger and we have to distribute that around to a lot of places. And, uh, it also makes your Docker build much slower because Docker build needs to serialize all of the files on disk and send them to the Docker daemon to, you know, do your actual building. This is, of course, you know, a little bit different if you're using Podman like I am, um, but it's it's roughly the same. It needs to compute the, you know, check some of all those files to make sure that they don't change so that it can properly cache layers uh, such as such as this layer here. Um, if we were to run our image, Docker run rmti at bash, uh, you'll see that, you know, we pulled in this .git directory, that pycache, it even pulled in the Docker file. You probably don't want that in your image as well, uh, as well as this entire virtual environment. And the way that you fix this is by setting up a Docker ignore file. And Docker ignore is very similar to git ignore. Unfortunately, it follows different rules. So you can't, you can't always just symlink your git ignore to Docker ignore, which I usually find is you know, a, a decent idea, except, you know, <laughs> Docker ignore doesn't include Git. Um, so I usually start with a, you know, at the very least, I always have this in my Docker ignore. So I'm always ignoring the Git directory. I never want to check in, or I never want to produce an image that has all of my version control information in it. Cause this is usually, you know, not relevant to your actual running application. And if it is, you probably have a design issue, um, but. <laughs> I'm not gonna address that here. So I usually at least start with .git. Um, if I'm working with talks, you know, I'll, I'll include a talks directory here, but you know, we'll also exclude our virtual environment and, you know, start up PyC files and maybe PyCache. And it, it works very similar to gitignore. So this is often stuff that you wanna set up here. Uh, I usually sort mine just to make sure that it's, you know, easy for somebody to add or remove stuff from this. It doesn't have merge conflicts. Uh, but once we set up that Docker ignore, we go to build again, Docker build. Uh, you won't really notice it here, but this was much, much faster than the original build. I guess we could time it. Uh, so, well, that's not apples to apples. Uh, let's see, move dot docker ignore to dot dot. Um, so this is the 
original build and it has to check some all those files. So it took like two seconds. And if we move the Docker ignore back in place, uh, and we build again, why did it not time it? <laughs> Dang it. All right, well, you'll just have to trust me that it's going to be much faster because it doesn't have to check some all those files. Um, but now if we uh, Docker run, we run again, you'll see now that we just have, oh, we've lost our, hang on. I put startup pi, didn't I? Oh, I put startup pi, I meant startup pi c. I screwed up. <laughs> so if we run this again, you'll see that we run, you'll see that we have just included our application. Uh, we have of course also included docker ignore and, and docker file. You could add those as well to here. Docker file, docker ignore, again, resort, um, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, the, the long and the short of this is it's usually a good idea to set up a docker ignore that has at least the get directory in it and probably more stuff if you have build artifacts at the time that you're building your docker image. And this can both reduce the size of your docker image and speed up your build time, which <laughs> is, is pretty great. Um, Recently at work, I actually added a Docker ignore to a Git repository, and its Docker build went from taking, you know, sixty plus seconds for its, you know, uh, trivial build, down to two or three seconds, which was a pretty significant improvement just from, you know, making the Docker ignore, not <laughs> not reference files that weren't needed in the image. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.